Hello there, wood turners, and welcome back to my shop. Today I want to talk about a topic that's, uh, I think, frustrating for a lot of uh, novice, novice turners, and that's what kind of finish should I use and how should I apply it. Now, I use several different types of finishes occasionally. Uh, I'll mention some of them, but that, what I want to do is spend time talking about the finish that I like the best. Um, occasionally, I use some Mahoney's uh, Walnut Oil Finish, and more recently, uh, one that's a couple of bucks cheaper, Ron Brown's Best, I can pick up at the local uh, Peachtree wood, uh, Woodworking. Uh, this works good for salad bowls, uh, matte sheen easy to apply but it's not shiny enough for a lot of the things and as many of y'all may have heard if you haven't you're hearing it now shiny cells uh, for some small things that I turn on the lathe uh, such as uh, you know boxes and, 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 and such ornaments a lot of times I'll use a friction polish such as uh, uh, Mylan's or uh, Hut Crystal Coat which are basically shellac based uh, finishes. They're not real strong, but they're very easy to, to apply. Occasionally, uh, let me see if I can move this into your view. Now I'm going to show you a few little, little tricks I've got. Um, one is this Lazy Susan. Uh, you know, it's a couple of, oh, I guess that's maybe. 14 inches or so across uh, base, top, mount on a Lazy Susan. Makes it easy to take it and, and, and use using a rattle coat, which is, this is another finish I use occasionally. It's uh, Krillon Crystal Clear. It's a clear acrylic. I use it for such things as ornaments. So for this particular uh, Lazy Susan, I have this upright contraption that I can hang things off of. Uh, but, you know, they, they can come down if it if it gets in the way if I'm finishing something such as maybe coffee scoops I may just hang it uh, uh, stick it off the end of something like that if I'm finishing a uh, you know say an all handle I'll just stick it in one of these holes and these holes match a uh, common dowel I don't remember what size I'm using it's probably about three-eighths of an inch uh, that I've drilled several hose at holes and then in the middle, I've got four little sharpened pegs that I ran into a uh, pencil sharpener that I can move around if I want a larger surface for a very large bowl to set it on. So that's that apparatus. Let me move that out of the way. Another finish that I use, uh, just started using occasionally, and I'm not sure if I like it. It's a Mahoney's finish. It's oil wax finish, very matte sheen. Uh, I think it's good for salad bowls uh, or for items that you, you want to get a finish on real fast, but it doesn't need to be shiny. Uh, an example was this little threaded uh, acorn uh, mushroom box I did out of Bradford Pear. Uh, I just rubbed it on on the lathe and friction. Uh, put it on there just because I want instantly to dry and I didn't care if it if it wasn't a shiny uh, shiny finish um, so there's that another finish I use occasionally is a shellac finish uh, I use this frequently for a uh, seal coat I've got a little jar and I've got a little brush that stays in there a little turned uh, handle I can take this off and just literally and I uh, paint it on it, shellac dries very fast. Almost anything will go on top of shellac. It, it's not a bad uh, sanding sealer that helps fill the pores so when you sand it, the sand uh, gets in the pores and it does tend to seal it a little bit. So even when, when you sand it down, you've got something already in the pores so when you put, put uh, the, your finish of choice, uh, it'll help uh, go a little bit faster. So now let me tell you about the one that I like the best. I don't know how I stumbled on it. I guess maybe I got a can of something similar when I bought my uh, my first mini lathe used, and I got finishes and everything else with it. But I like this this product, uh, Minwax Antique Oil, uh, and 
Wow, man, I'll show you this little little jig. I just drilled a hole and notched it out to fit this, and that's so the air will stay in the top of the can and uh, prevent oxidation and, and uh, increase the life. I, I usually finish up a can within about a year or so, and I've had real good luck. It hasn't uh, hasn't dried up on me. So. So the first thing we're going to do when we finish with, uh, well, let me talk a little more about Minwax uh, antique oil. Basically, it's uh, about two-thirds solvent and about one-third, uh, as I understand it, boil linseed oil. It, uh, it, a couple of coats uh, will give you a sort of a matte finish, and you, but it will build if you add three, four, five, uh, six, six coats. I normally don't go higher than about six coats. Other finishes that are similar to that are that are commonly called Danish oil or, or tongue oil. Generally, they're about one third varnish, one third mineral spirits, and about one third oil. Oil might be boil linseed oil, it might be tongue oil, it might be uh, walnut oil, but generally in those finishes. Antique oil, as I say, is doesn't have the varnish in it. Um, and let me just read the instructions on how you apply it. Sand to a, obtain a smooth, uniform surface. Remove all dust with a cloth dampened with mineral spirits. Apply, wipe, uh, wipe on or brush a generous coat of antique oil. Apply in the direction of grain. After five to 10 minutes, buff evenly with a clean, lint-free rag. Two coats are recommended. Wait 24 hours and apply a second coat. What I generally do is I apply a coat, usually in the evening, next day, Whenever I get back in my shop, mid-morning or so, I apply another coat. After that, I wait at least 24 hours if I would decide to put a third or a fourth coat, and I do wait 24 hours between coats. Now, fortunately, I'm in an air-conditioned, uh, heated, cooled uh, shop, so the relative humidity is, is fairly low. It doesn't get real humid down here, so it does dry at a pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable time. Now. Um, let me read you a couple of uh, something that Ru the late Russ Fairfield uh, wrote about about this Minwax antique oil. He said it's the only true Danish oil that remains on the market. It's boil linseed oil and thinner in its simplest form. There are no varnish resins, but it's a wonderful finish for turned wood. For some reason, it's ignored by wood turners in favor of the inferior, in, in his opinion, uh, Watco Danish oil. What I like about it, it's easy to apply. I mean, you just slap it on. Uh, it'll absorb into the wood because the uh, the solvent makes it absorb easily. You don't have to worry about brush strokes or anything like that. Much easier than than a finish that, you know, I, I'd have no complaints of if I knew how to do it and was willing to do it in my shop. A, a lacquer finish, but I don't like the idea of spraying in my shop, so I avoid it. And I've never learned to use uh, use a lacquer. Uh, but it's easy to apply. It's easy to, to repair or to apply another coat later if, if it, for some reason it, it needed another coat. Um, and it's about $18 a can, so it, it's, it's moderately, moderately priced. So let's go ahead and let me show you how I do it. Uh, another little trick I use, uh, I take a milk jug, cut a hole in it, and I cut little, little small pieces of, of t-shirts. You know, most of us old guys, uh, have lots of old, old wore out t-shirts. We just gotta take the time to part with one and, and cut it out. But I use a, take a small folded area like that. The, the other thing that I will do is I'll use nitrile gloves. Don't use latex. This is resistant to almost all solvents, so it'll protect your hands and keep the stuff off of your hands and off your fingernails. It's, it's good, good stuff. Plus, you can use them, uh, I get a number of uses out of, out of these nitrile gloves because they're very, very hard. They're fairly inexpensive. They're, oh, maybe uh, 10, 12 bucks for, for a, a hundred that'll last you a long, long time since you get multiple, multiple uses out of it. Uh, to take the top loose, I usually use a paint can opener and just catch it under there and pry it. The other thing I do is I use a small container uh, you might have seen this in a turning tip I published in uh, American Wood Turner. I think I had my uh, tips and tricks, but uh, 
two quarts of uh, instant tea or instant lemonade comes in these these capsules, these little containers, and they make wonderful little ca capsules or con containers. So I pour a small amount, just enough I, uh, to get me through the project. Immediately close it so I don't forget. A little trick I want to show you to put these items on uh, as I'm finishing them. I take little pieces of uh, old bandsaw and make these little little forms. So if I'm doing several projects, I can scatter them around. Uh, you can make some round, smaller ones. If you've got something, for example, such as a uh, small box, it'll fit more easily on that. Sometimes you put it on that and it'll start rocking or falling. So this works. This works well. Uh, so I'm going to put my first coat on and what I'll have going on frequently in my shop is I'll have two, three, four, five items in various states of applying this antique oil and one of them might be a fresh one like this, others may already have two, three or four coats and, and then after a while when I feel like it's, it's got the shine I want I'll take it off the rack and, 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 and it's done uh, and I'll go around and hit all these different things. So let's try this. We're going to try this with this awl. This is a piece of uh, Bradford pear. And I just soak it on there. Apply it liberally because you do want it to, to soak in. It's, it's easy to apply. The only downside is if you're in, you're in a real big hurry, it does take uh, uh, one to two weeks depending on how many coats because you really want this thing to cure uh, for, for three to seven days to, until you can no longer smell it before you actually buff it or before you want to give it to anybody. The one thing I don't use this for anymore, uh, I don't use this on the inside of boxes. I, I, I do like this uh, Mahoney's oil wax finish on the inside of boxes that I apply on a lathe because it has a, a very nice smell. And if you're not careful, this uh, using antique oil, it can get captured inside that box and when somebody, a lady's uh, looking at your box to consider buying it, if she gets a whiff of something that doesn't smell good, she's going to run away. So this is a little Osage orange bowl. And you just slap it on liberally, just rub it in, and just allow it to kind of soak in. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll come back. I'll come back to that in a minute. The other thing on some items, such as if they've got a lot of texture, uh, such as the top of this uh, this threaded uh, threaded acorn box, rather than a rag, I find it works a lot better if I use a little acid brush I use for for glue and other things uh, to just liberally uh, paint it on. Uh, I usually only do that for the texturing part. Also, works real well when you want to apply it to. Uh, say uh, something like bark. Uh, again, you could just, it's a lot easier to do a build up and, and get it on the, on the bark. But for the rest of the surface, uh, uh, the surface of most turnings that don't have this kind of texture, I do find it a lot easier to use a little, uh, little cloth, cloth rag. Okay, you can see I've done a few. Uh, put some oil on it. Uh, just want to demonstrate when I say buff it, this is what I'm talking about. Nothing real terribly complicated. You're just kind of rubbing it out just a little bit to get it deeper in the wood and get any puddles off the uh, surface. And it's that, it's that, uh, that simple. The other thing I want to mention, a safety note, it's very, very important. When you finish with these little rags, uh, of this finish. You need to lay them out on the concrete floor. I don't ever have any any bigger than this, so they're not nearly as risk as, as it would be a larger, but but because of the oxidation of boiled linseed oil, there is a real risk of spontaneous combustion. So actually what I do, uh, I finish in a little different part of my shop where I have a metal shelf and I throw this on the corner of the metal shelf. And the next day it's dry, then I throw it away. It, it's, that, uh, it's that simple. Uh, bigger rags, uh, you might want to handle it a little bit, a little bit differently. But that is real important to avoid that that spontaneous, uh, spontaneous combustion. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something useful out of it. If you have any questions or comments, 
please, please post them. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll do so. Thank you.